Costa Rica. And uh, so I actually got invited to Vanuatu. I was hanging out in Vanuatu. I wanted to see why they're so damn happy. <laughs> so I go check them out. And first of all, they're a Melanesian island in the middle of the Pacific, which is pretty happy. You know, really warm, nice. These people are all like, have this great Melanesian hair. They all have like these froze. They have like perfect skin, perfect hair, perfect teeth. Nobody was sad, you know? And they live, and they live off of like, you know, fish and chickens and coconuts, and that sounded pretty good to me. Right? I mean, this is sounding pretty good already, right? We're all like, you know, Vanuatu sounds perfect, right? But they're so flipping far from anything that they don't import anything. So 85% of their economy is local. 85% is local because it's too expensive. And they did all these studies, you know, and they figured out that what people really wanted was access to their natural world because they were fishing people. They wanted to be able to fish. They wanted good maternal and family health. They wanted education for their people. They wanted security in their families and in their extended families and for their elders, where they didn't have to panic about what was gonna to happen to them when they were old. They wanted, you know, that was their indicators of quality of life. No, one's, no one in that country wanted more stuff, you know? They didn't buy their way of life at a mall, and they seemed to have no interest in it. And so I was checking them all, and one thing I noticed is they had this brewery, right? I'm not much of a beer drinker. I did give it a taste. It was, you know, I don't know, I'm not a good taster on that, but soup, it was so interesting to me. So they had this one brewery in Vanuatu, and in that brewery, they made their beer, and then they just reused their bottles, and they made new beer in it. And I thought, that's pretty smart. Because what do we do? They call it recycling, and we take and we crush everything, and we remake it, which uses a whole bunch of energy which is actually kind of a dumb economic and materials equation. But those guys are just like, we're an island, we're just gonna remake it. That's what we do, right? And then I was up in their village, and their village was really funny because, um, it just as a commentary. So you guys hung out with me, I'm pretty cool. I hang out with anyone, pretty much, except for jerks. But you know, so we, we go up there, and I bring my, my 10-year-old son, he's in some of these pictures, Indian boy, long ponytail, and we're going up there into this village and we're not going to speak SUV things because it's like way up this hill. We go up to this village and this, this, this part of the community is like super rural. And they, you know, they live up there and they, and they have these thatched huts. And then their choice of electricity was solar. And what they powered was some lights for their village and their cell phones. <laughs> That's what they had, right? Then all the food was local, they had like a little pump and they had water and you know, sanitation, they had an outhouse, right? And they weren't really wearing a lot of clothes. That's what I'm gonna tell you. Like the men were wearing like this little thing that covered their, you know, private parts, right? It's like this little woven basket thing, right? And the women had on this like skirt, right? And so my 10 year old son is like, oh, mom, mom, so they're, they're naked. I was like, I was like, in one of those mother moments, I was like, well, that's your problem, not theirs, right? Which <laughs> <laughs> is true, because they are perfectly fine. I was like, get over it, kid. Do my ten minutes that he's out playing soccer with these kids, right? You know? And, and they, were, they, were, they were the happiest country in the world. They were wearing any clothes, they were happy, right? So I just want to point that out for all these style buffs and everything, but you know, they were so happy about it. And the funny thing was that when they went to town, they put on clothes and went to town, is almost every one of them had, you know what a sarong is, a wrap? Yeah. Almost everyone had a Bob Marley sarong. That's <laughs> <laughs> the greatest thing. It's like they're all dressed like Bob Marley when they go to town. Like, you know, like, it, it wasn't an ACDC thing or anything. It was like the chill music, you know? So then I asked them, I said, you guys, I said, you guys lost your crown to, to uh, Costa Rica. I said, how'd you guys lose that? Like, why are they the happiest country in the world now? And the, the minister of the economics told me, he says, uh, faulty data. <laughs> <laughs> so they're studying it again, trying to get it all down. So at this economics conference, I kind of threw down and I said, uh, you know, I'm challenging you. Give us like 10 years and we're the happiest country in the world. We need to be a king. You know, but I think about that, a lot of the people in the room, and I feel like we need to do this. We need to say, what are our indicators? You know, how do we define it? 
I'm sick of seeing these definitions of full-time employment or income and unemployment. You know, because it turns out in my community, the average native person would rather be a native person than working at the casino. We do not want to, like people don't want to just work at the casino. People want to live as Indians. They want to rice. They want to harvest. They want to live the quality of life that the Creator gave us and not become something else. And the more entrenched you are in a cash economy, you, the more you become that. The more removed you are from that, and the more you localize your food and energy systems, the less dependent you are. And there's a direct relationship between quality 